Moguls possessed deep aesthetic sense and were connoisseurs of all fine things. The Mughal ancestry was rich in aesthetic pursuits and the Shagatai band was reputed to be the most cultivated family group in Central Asia. They were intellectually sound and culturally astute indulging in pursuits of high-level finery and sophistication. Their reputation in this respect assumed legendary proportions and all fine aspects of life were invariably associated with the Mughals. As patrons of painting the Mughals took this art to the height of unique accomplishment and left a legacy of enduring beauty. The styles of painting which developed during their reign had their origin in the courts of the relatives of the Mughals at Herat and surrounding environs. This school was properly developed under Akbar who organized it with his usual zeal. It was under his direct supervision and the more prominent of the hundred or so painters were granted ranks in the governmental structure as mansabdars. Under imperial guidance and supervision the painters worked in a large building at Fatepur Sikri and the works of all painters were weekly laid before the emperor who then conferred rewards according to the excellence of workmanship or increased the monthly salaries. Khwaja Abdul Samad was the head of the establishment and was known by the title of Sharen Kalam, Sweet Pen, an apt recognition of his skill in calligraphy. Later he became master of the mint and subsequently was appointed Diwan at Multan. They were quick to learn the principles and techniques of Persian art and the joint efforts of Persian and Indian artists soon led to the rise of the distinct style of Mughal painting. Occasionally many artists collaborated in the painting of a single picture with the leading artists sketching the composition and other painters putting in the parts at which they were expert. Akbar's artists specialized in portraiture and book illustration. They also are indicative of the value attached to this genre of fine arts by the Mughals that was then followed by the other grandee of the Mughal state and numerous principalities spread over the empire that recognized the Mughal suzerainty. Akbar's traditions were maintained by Jahangir, who was proud both of his artists and his own critical judgment. He is regarded as the most astute amongst the Mughals' royal aesthetes and is widely recognized to be an extremely good judge of painting. Even if any other person has put the eye and eyebrow of a face he could perceive whose work the original face is and who has painted the eye and eyebrows. It was remarkable insight that Jahangir had acquired that, in turn, hugely enriched the Mughal legacy. A special skill developed by painters of the subcontinent in Jahangir's time was the production of extremely faithful copies of paintings. The emperor appreciated gifts of paintings from foreign visitors and Sir Thomas Rowe recorded that once when he presented a painting in the morning, by the evening several copies had been prepared by the native artists. They were commissioned to paint any incident or scene that struck the emperor's fancy. The court painters have left a record of the public men of note that is probably unequaled for fidelity and artistry. Under Shah Jahan, painting, like all the other arts, continued to flourish. He reduced the number of court painters, keeping only the very best and forcing others to seek the patronage of the princes and the nobles but the art did not suffer by this. Dara Shirko was a patron of painting and nobles like Zafar Khan, the governor of Kashmir, who had a beautiful anthology of the works of the living poets prepared, illustrated with their paintings, employed many artists. Other painters set up studios in the bazaars. An interesting feature of the period, typical of the general predominance of the indigenous elements in various spheres, in the secretariat, literature, and music, was that only one Persian artist was employed by Shah Jahan. The most famous musician of the period was Tansen who was brought up in the hospice of Sheikh Muhammad Ghaz of Gwalior. The variety of music most extensively cultivated at Akbar's court was the ancient Thurpad. Music received great encouragement under Shah Jahan who had 30 prominent musicians and instrumentalists at his court, who were generously rewarded for good performances. Along with Rupad there was a marked tendency towards beautification and ornamentation and the Kyle, 
or ornate, school of music was beginning to assert itself. While during Aurangzeb's reign music ceased to enjoy royal patronage but its popularity with the upper classes was firmly established and a number of books on the history and theory of Indo-Muslim music were written during this period. One of the most famous was the Ragdarpan, Mirror of Music, written by Fakarullah Saif Khan who was at one time governor of Kashmir. Through such developments, the music of the Mughal court became part of the life of the ordinary people of the subcontinent.